Today's question comes from Casey. Casey commented on episode 11 on the YouTube channel for the Hopefield Financial Podcast. Casey says, Thanks, Jay. You mentioned savings rate as the best predictor of financial success. How do you calculate savings rate and what should be the savings rate goal? Thank you, Casey, for your question. And also thank you so much for commenting on the YouTube videos that we've been producing with the podcast. I sincerely appreciate it. Let's back up and talk about where the importance for savings rate comes from. Ramsey Solutions did a study where they basically were looking at the factors that correlate to individuals who had enough money to retire with dignity. In particular, they were looking at people who were considering themselves financially successful, those who had peace with their personal finances, and those who had basically secured their financial futures. It turns out that the number one factor that correlates to someone who's successful at securing their financial future is their savings rate, which makes sense. If you save money, you'll have money saved. Back to your question, how do you calculate savings rate? Savings rate is going to simply be a a division problem. You're going to have your saving and investing summed up at the numerator, and then in the denominator, you're going to put your income. You could do a savings rate for for the month. So in your budget, you could say, this is the money I'm saving this month. This is the money I'm investing. Don't forget to include any money in there that's being withheld from your company for like a 401k or an employee retirement program where they're matching stuff. You include your contribution, not the company match. And when you write your income in the denominator, you include that money that they're also putting aside there. Effectively, you want your take-home pay plus your withholdings for retirement, not necessarily taxes. In short, take your savings and your investing, add them together, divide that sum by your income, that gives you your savings rate. While you can do this month to month, your savings rate is going to go up and down. A better picture of your overall savings rate is going to be your annual savings rate. If you were to look at your total income for the year and your total savings and investing for the year and calculate your savings rate that way. This prevents your savings rate from looking inflated for the things that you save for throughout the year if you have like car insurance that you pay once every six months or 12 months. The next part of your question is the harder one to answer. What is a good savings rate? If you ask Dave Ramsey, he's going to point to baby step four where he suggests that you save 15% for retirement. Naturally, that's going to be his baseline, his minimum savings rate for you because well, you're probably saving money beyond just retirement. So he's going to see a savings rate of closer to 15 to 20% is healthy. The Money Guys are another group that gives financial insights. They're based in Tennessee, not too far from Ramsey. They've, they've recently done a joint podcast episode, which I found to be pretty interesting. The Money Guys suggest something closer to 30% for your savings rate. If you look at the FIRE community, Financial independence, retire early. The material that you can find from that community on the internet is going to tell you that you need at least 50% of a savings rate to be considered healthy. And they've got examples of people who are saving like 75 plus percent of their income. That kind of life is not for everyone. A healthy savings rate for you is going to be one that is covering all of your savings goals. You see that all of your goals are on track and you're going to be meeting your goals on time according to your priorities. It's also going to be the rate which encompasses enough investing for retirement so that you can retire with dignity. It's also going to be the rate that's not so high that you're sacrificing your day-to-day life today and basically taking away from your joy because you're spending so very little now. Remember in the first four episodes of the Hope Filled Financial Podcast, we discussed frugality. Frugality is going to be the most effective and efficient means for you to optimize the amount of happiness that you get per dollar that you spend, save, or give. It's going to optimize the utility you get. If you end up being suboptimal to frugality in your daily spending today, your savings rate may be too high. How do you know your savings goals and your retirement goals are on track? Well, that's what we're going to start talking about in the main topic as we go over the zero-based budget.